Welcome back, everyone. Happy Sunday. And I'm glad the rain stopped a little bit so we can uh, get into the building. And uh, welcome back our mission uh, team. Uh, we had a team of people uh, go to New Haven, Connecticut this past week, did all kinds of service projects, helping a church there. And so they're back and uh, they're exhausted and hopefully not sermon time's not nap time. But welcome, uh, everyone, and, and thank you for your prayers. Uh, one more week uh, after I preach today, I'm going to be um, headed to the airport, flying to Casey, Illinois, uh, for my third week of fuel uh, ministry, dirt bike camp. And uh, so um, they're all motocrossers, right? They're all motocrossers. Usually I like trail riding in the woods, climbing hills, uh, their dirt track, running around as fast as they can. Extra prayers uh, for me in motocross, you know, dirt bike camp this week, and uh, appreciate that. So uh, I'm Mark, and this is Brennan. We're going to uh, tag team today, and so grateful about that. Uh, Brennan, introduce yourself. Yes, thank you. So I'm looking around the room, and I feel like I've had the opportunity to introduce myself to most of you uh, and start to build that relationship. Uh, but that being said, I know that this is a big room, and it's a big church. Uh, so first things first, if we haven't had that opportunity yet, uh, let's, let's, not, let's find some time to do that. You can find me after service. We can get coffee, get lunch. Uh, let's start to build a relationship because I'm almost out of here. We've got one more month here mm. as interns. Fast. Yeah. So, uh, it's, you know, if you haven't had that opportunity, um, that's okay. I want to tell you a little bit more about myself, though, as we begin the morning. Uh, so like Mark said, my name is Brennan. Uh, I'm the preaching intern for the summer. I'm from northern Kentucky. It's where I was born and raised. My parents, uh, my brother, my sister, they still live there. Uh, just to put it on a map for you, it's just south of Cincinnati, Ohio. And then for schooling, I'm currently studying preaching and church leadership at Johnson University in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I've had uh, a blast with my time there. I've learned a lot. A lot of uh, valuable relationships have come out of my time there, and I've just got three semesters left, so I'm mm. nearing the end, but time there has been so valuable. Yeah. Um, and you know, this, this summer, as the preaching intern, I've, I've come into this position, and it's been, it's been great. It's been exciting. I've loved the community. I've loved the people. I've loved the area. The beach is nice. There's no beach in Kentucky, no beach in Tennessee. True. So, but, um, you know, I feel like I, I owe a special thank you to Paul and Doris Cunningham. I know yes. Doris was sitting in here in the first service, um, but uh, they have been my host home for the summer. And I said earlier, I feel like I owe them the world because it feels like that's what they've given me over these, these couple months here in Delaware. So, Yay. Paul, Doris, uh, I'm super thankful for you guys, and I, I can't tell you that enough. Yeah. So, every Amen. aspect. Amen. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So every aspect of this summer has been really great. It's been exciting. And Mark, you know what else has been really great? What's that? This series walkthrough through the letter of First John. Confidence. The confidence series, right. And it's been, it's been awesome. It's been valuable on a yeah. lot of different aspects because we kind of bounced around a little bit, right? Week one, we talk about confidence and the identity of Jesus. It's That's where it starts. Foundational, yeah. right? And then second week, we talk about confidence in this fact that God is is light. It's super valuable. And then next, you know, confidence in our forgiveness, forgiveness of our sins. That's yeah. huge. It's important for us. Huge. And then a couple weeks ago, I remember you talking about, you know, confidence in the good lawyer, the we good get, advocate. We have a great lawyer, yes, right? The best. Yeah. And then just last week, you preached on confidence in Word of God, Word of God, which is also so important. Yeah. So I'm curious. All right. With this whole confidence thing, our walk through of First John, this tiny little letter this summer. Where are we going today? All right. Well, we don't want to be flippant with the Word of God, right? right? Let's be faithful. And I hope, uh, I hope all of you are ready for your next booster shot of confidence today. Ready? ready. No? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're ready. So the, uh, the next dose comes from just one verse. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, just one verse. It says this, as for you, and I think we can assume he's talking to us, because previous, ah, you know, my dear children, uh, as for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. It remains in you. And you don't need anyone teaching you. For the anointing, as the anointing teaches you in all things, and this anointing is real, not counterfeit, and as it teaches... 
Remain in Him. Remain in Him. One verse. So good. Yeah, and you know, Mark, I remember at the beginning of this week, just a few days ago, you came to me and you said, Brennan, this is it. This is our week. You know, we're going to get to tag team this sermon, and yep. we've been looking forward to this all summer. We've known this was on the calendar, and I'm, you know, we're talking about it, and we're excited together. And I say, Mark, by the way, what is, what is the passage? What, you know, it's First John, this confidence series, but what, what text is it? And he says, what's just verse 27 of chapter 2? I said, okay. And he said, that's it. Just one verse. One verse. A sermon on one verse. And I said, okay. It's going to be a short sermon, which is, you know, that's okay. We'll see about that. Exactly. So, you know, I'm a little nervous about this. And then, you know, the week progresses. We get into the week, and I'm like, let's, let's see what Mark's got in store. So I open my Bible, and I'm reading, and I, I start to understand, like, there's a lot to unpack here. And just this one verse, there's a lot that we need to spend time talking about together this morning. So I'm really excited. Yeah. You know, actually, I want to read that again. I, sure. So rich, so valuable. First John chapter 2, verse 27. Here we go. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as, just as it has taught you, remain in him. We might need more than an hour for this one. Yeah. It's, it's full. Yeah, but we'll right? have to work with what we've got, but it's rich. There's a lot in there. <laughs> well, um, what if you start us... Uh, talk to me about this word anointing. Yeah, so, you know, you probably picked up on it. It's one verse, and we, we talked about it. It's such a short verse. You know, it's, it's just one text, little short little paragraph. But, but this word anointing, it's mentioned three times. Yeah. The beginning, middle, and end. It's weaved in there very subtly. And it's, it's obvious this, this is an important concept of this text, anointing. So I'm asking myself, you know, as the week goes on, like, what, what is this all about? Because I didn't grow up around this word anointing. I didn't hear it very much. Um, and, and, you know, I'm just speaking for myself, but I grew up in a Christian church, uh, dad in ministry, uh, you know, youth group every Sunday, and I, I didn't hear this word anointing. It wasn't talked about from the pulpit, wasn't talked about uh, at youth on Sunday nights, certainly not a word that you talk about with your family or your friends, like at the dinner table <laughs> when you're just hanging out. <laughs> the anointing. So, you know, I'm, hey, anointing, what is that? And I'm, I'm wrestling with this, and, and the week goes on, and I'm, I'm getting frustrated because, you know, I, I've already got to preach a sermon with Mark, and that's difficult enough, but now, now I don't know what this word anointing <laughs> means, and I'm struggling with this, but you know, I decided to do a little word study. Good, good. Mm -hmm. So I do some research, I dig into the context of this, this term anointing, and it's, it's really interesting. It's actually a concept that's threaded all throughout Scripture, and it, it starts in Genesis, the yeah. Old Testament. So I've got a couple accounts of anointing that we can discuss this morning. First, like I said in Genesis, it takes place with Jacob in the wilderness. So Jacob is all alone. He's out. He's, he's sleeping. He's secluded by himself. Okay? He says he falls asleep on this rock. The text says he, he rests his head on the stone, huh. and he falls asleep this night, yeah. just all by himself. And during his sleep, the, the Lord gives him a dream. Okay? So in this dream, he sees the place that he's sleeping. He, he sees it in his, his vision, his dream, and he sees the stone. And, and at the stone, he sees a stairway leading up to heaven, a stairway from heaven to earth. Okay? And then he, he feels the presence of the Lord in that moment. He hears the Lord's voice mm. in that moment. He yeah. encountered God yeah. in this dream. Right? So he wakes up, and, and the text tells us, Jacob exclaimed, Surely the Lord is in this place just based off of that dream, right? So that day, uh, he actually, he gets, he gets oil, and he anoints the stone, that stone that he fell asleep on, the stone that he had the dream on. He anoints it with oil. He anoints it a place. He anoints a rock. Yes, a rock. All right. Now, how weird is that? You know, kind of weird. I don't know a whole <laughs> lot about anointing, but, you know, typically when I think about it, I think of, you know, uh, anointing a person yeah. in the Bible, not right. a place. There's a couple more valuable examples of that. You go on to Exodus and in Exodus, the Israelites, they, they build the tabernacle, right? They, they complete the construction of the tabernacle and the tent. And as soon as it's done, the first thing they do is they anoint the tent with oil. They anoint it. Hmm. And, and, you know, you're, you're probably going to start to see a theme here. Why is this? It, it, anointing a place. The, the tabernacle is where God's presence would dwell among the worldly community. Okay, so anointing... In Scripture, specifically the Old Testament, it's, it's really it's a bridge between heaven and earth. Remember the stairway, a bridge between heaven and earth. 
Gotcha. Right? Okay, yeah. Start, starting to track with me. And then now, of course, God dwelling in the Israelite community, a bridge between heaven and earth. And then same thing is seen in Exodus with the priests and the kings of Israel. They would be anointed, so they would have oil rubbed on their, their forehead or their hair, their chest, shoulders, and they'd be anointed because they're supposed to mediate heavenly knowledge, heavenly leadership to the worldly community. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're acting as a bridge, okay? So that's really, that's what anointing is. is it's, it's a bridge between heaven and earth. And if you follow that concept into the New Testament, yeah. you see it in Jesus, right? The, the right. story of Jesus. Because Jesus is God as man with men, with the world, right? And, and that makes sense. Christos is, you know, Christ, Christos. Christos in the Greek, it means the anointed one. The anointed one, Christos. And that really makes sense with us as Christians, followers of Jesus, Christians, we are anointed ones following the Christos, the anointed one. All right, Greek right? scholar, tell them what the word anointed is. Okay, so anointed is, is charisma, not, yeah. not charisma. It's the same root word for Christ. S- right, you probably right? hear it, super similar, yeah. Christos and charisma. Okay, so there's a, there's a link there, and we can yeah. pick up on it, but, but it's charisma. And what that word means is it's to smear or to smudge, hmm. to smear or to smudge. You and know a little bit about that. Yeah, you know it. So this <laughs> this summer, I've I've become all too familiar with smearing and smudging, uh, because you know you go out to the beach, and I've got this fair skin uh-huh. with the red hair, uh-huh. and I'm smearing and smudging sunscreen all over me, you know, because if not, I'm getting cooked. Why? And that's, I have a mental image of Toby <laughs> smearing you with the sun. Did that ever happen? Maybe a few times. Okay, all right. Smearing and smudging. He anointed me in sunscreen. <laughs> there you yes. go. But obviously in this text, you know, John, John's not talking about the anointing of sunscreen. What's he talking about? The anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy us. Spirit. Yeah. Isn't it's that really, good? It's rich. It's really good. The anointing is a reference to the Holy Spirit. I, and I love, I love how our text begins. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. It's a gift. The anointing of the Holy Spirit was actually a gift given to us. And uh, when, I, when I'm reminded of this gift, my mind runs immediately to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking to his disciples like right before the cross. And he says to them, hey, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father to give, to give you another counselor, another paraclete in the Greek, another advocate, the word another means just like me, who will help you and be with you forever, spirit of truth. And so it's a gift. The Holy Spirit, the anointing is is the gift promised from Jesus. And then my mind has to race to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, the Pentecost, Holy Spirit comes on the apostles in an incredible way. And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, one of the first things he reveals is, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of all your sin and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. I've always questioned, when it says we were given the gift of the Holy Spirit, is that that we got a gift from the Holy Spirit? Or did we get the gift of the himself, you know, mm. the Holy Spirit in us? Mm. You know, a gift from him or gift of him? Yes. <laughs> right? Both. both. And everything that entails, we've been given a gift. Um, last, last week, Patricia Anderson was baptized into Christ and we captured on video. I, I just, I want you to see it again. Check this out. This is Patricia Anderson and she's responding in the same way. And here's why. On the first sermon after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, like the first public proclamation of the gospel, the Apostle Peter stood up and gave a great sermon just about Jesus and who he is and what he offers and what he promises. And then he explained that if you repent, really just turn from selfishness to live for him, and be baptized into Christ, We receive the forgiveness of every one of our sins and the gift of his presence, his spirit in our lives. And that gives great confidence. Amen? Amen. Can I ask you, do you believe Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God? Do you believe what he did on the cross 
totally takes care of our sin. And are you confessing before all these witnesses that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. Because of your faith, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Risen with him, total forgiveness in his spirit forever. Amen? Amen. And so Patricia and Aaron and every, every one of us who have been united with Christ, we can go on living in, with great confidence in forgiveness of all of our sin and the gift of his presence, his spirit, the gift, our gift. And what an incredible gift, right? What else you see? What is an incredible gift? And I, I actually want to go back to the passage. And, and just something at the very beginning, how the, the passage opens, kind of caught my eye. So here we go again. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. Hmm. So that word remains. Remains. Yeah, it kind of caught my attention. Remains. So what I think that means, you know, th this word remains, and I looked into it a little bit. I think it's abide. 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 Lives yeah, 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 exactly. So it lives in here, and, and thus, because of that, we should abide by that. Abide by the Spirit, right? And I really love that, that passage from John mm. that you read. I'm going to read that again, too. John 14, 15 and 16. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, just like me, to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. Forever. This is forever. This is, this is a guest, yeah. the Spirit's a guest, and it's not a temporary guest. It's a, it's a forever guest, permanent, right? The Spirit's not, it's not just, you know, we're not saying, come on over for dinner. Right? <laughs> come on, just ha have some fun with us, play some games, grab a bite to eat, and then you can be on your way. It's not, you know, Spirit, this is a tough week coming up for me. Yeah. You know, I've got a lot going on these next couple weeks. It's, this is a tough time. Come on over, because I need you right now. Right. You know, this, it remains in us forever, abides in us. And I want to remind us, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. It's a really good thing. Yeah. So a permanent guest. Yes, absolutely. So the, our gift, our guest, yeah. right? And kind of in keeping with our G words yeah. here, right? I want to suggest he's our guide. He's our guide. Hmm. Now our text goes on to say, it says this phrase, you do not, and you do not need anyone teaching you. We're done. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't need anyone. To, okay, wait. This isn't an instruction uh, that you don't need teachers and preachers and people to help you with your maturity because the Bible actually uh, instructs there to be teachers and preachers and, you know, you know guides. Uh, so we need each other and we need preaching and teaching. But in the context, it's a reference to the previous paragraph referring to false teachers teaching false things designed to lead you astray. And so what it's underscoring, hey, you don't need those teachers. You don't need any of them to teach you. And then it literally in the Greek says, but as the anointing teaches you about all things in truth, not lie. So he's going to be teaching toward the truth, not a lie. He's going to be guiding in all things truth, not lie. I love that. And so we have this gift, a permanent uh, guest as a guide, a forever guide in our lives to head us toward the truth of his word. In all things. I think that points me to the role of the Holy Spirit. And I know there's a lot of teachings out there about the role of the Holy Spirit on the Christian today. But Brennan, let me just, you know, kind of off the top, if I would ask you, hey, what's the role of the Holy Spirit in, mm -hmm. in, a, in the life of a Christian today? What are you saying? Mm -hmm. Well, that is a big question. Um, you know, I think our response to Scripture and the response to the Spirit, it's always important. Um, but the first thing that comes to mind for me is to thank Him. You know, All right. Have some gratitude because we talked about it. This is a gift, a good gift. All right. And, and it, res it resides in us, abides in us forever. All so right. So He's going to be him, there. Thank Him. Have some gratitude. What about conviction? That's good. Yes. What's he going to convict us of? Uh, you know, what's right? What's wrong? True lies, yes. right? Conviction? What right. Else? Another role of the Holy Spirit uh, Let's for see. Us. Counseling. Counseling. Uh, count, come alongside yes. us. Guide us in the truth. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a counselor. Amen, Kathy? <laughs> How about character development? 
Character, Thinking of the, love, you know, fruits of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit, love, yes. joy, peace, patience, goodness. Yes. Like the character of God. Right. He wants to develop that in us. That's mm-hmm. a good one. What else? Let's see, we've got C words. I'm thinking of, how about empowering? Do you have a word for emp- empowering? A I do. Word? Capacitator. Okay. <laughs> you know, capacitator. Like Doc, back to the future in his flux capacitator. <laughs> empowering into the future. You remember that, right? No. <sighs> What year were you born? 2002. <laughs> it's a really cool movie, Back to the mm. Future. The Capacitor. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. What else? What are you thinking? What's his uh, role? Wow. Well, you know, I think a big one, and maybe this is the answer you're looking for, because it goes along with the series. What? Confidence. Absolutely. Yes. Right? That's Confidence. why we're, that's why that's the sermon text. Yes. Confidence. Um, let me, let's back up for a minute, though, because okay. I think you haven't mentioned his number one role communication. Hmm. Do you realize that your Bible is actually a project of the Holy Spirit? This is really his first responsibility, communication of God's Word, and he's the one responsible for this. Um, Peter writes in 2 Peter 1 verse 21, he says, listen, no prophecy ever had its origin in human will. But the prophets, though human, they spoke from God being carried along by the Holy Spirit. And I want to say his number one role in our lives is the communication of the Word of God. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I I think that's his role. So, you know, so what? You know, we have this incredible gift. You know, he's a permanent guest and he's going to guide us in all things true. You know, so what do we do with him? You know, how now shall we live? Mm. Like, you know, what's our next step? What's our takeaway, yeah. right? Yeah. And I love the passage because uh, John tells us, like the last phrase in our text is so simple. He says, remain in him. Remain in him. Now, in, uh, in the original language, this is present tense, meaning continuous action. And it's actually an active voice, meaning it requires our action. We have to do something. What's that look like? Yeah, well, we, we already mentioned it this morning. You know, thank Him. Thank the Spirit. We've, we've talked about it what all day. What an incredible it's gift. A, it's a gift, right, and a gift that is in us. And gratitude, right? Yes, Anything absolutely. Anything He gives us, we ought to respond yes. to gratitude. Um, I think along with gratitude, I think maybe, maybe some in here need to apologize to Him. Mm. And I think maybe we ought to apologize to the Holy Spirit for just ignoring Him. I mean, when's the last time you acknowledged him? Brendan, what if, um, what if tomorrow morning we scheduled to have a meeting at 9 o'clock, and let's say that I got here first, and I'm sitting back in the, one of the pews back there, and I'm just kind of waiting for you, whatever, and maybe I'm just on my phone. And what if you came in the back door, and you're like, hey, Mark, good morning. And what if I don't respond, I don't look at you, I just like sit there like this. Hmm. And what if... Uh, you get a little bit closer, and you said something like, hey, Mark, how's your morning going? And I don't respond a bit. I'm just like this. And what if you sat down right beside me and like, hey, bro, what's going on? And I don't, I don't respond a bit. I'm just like this. How are you feeling? Yeah, probably a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going yes. on, right? Uh, hello? Right, exactly. I wonder mm. if the Holy Spirit ever feels like that with us. Hello? Hey? I'm here. So maybe, maybe some of us need to apologize. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Which I think, number three, I think we just ought to be better at acknowledging Him. Sure. Like, you know, you know thank you, Lord. You promised me this gift. I have the gift of the Holy Spirit. I, I want to acknowledge that He's here and just kind of, you know, be aware. Right? Acknowledge him. Yeah. What else would you right. say? Right. Well, I think this fourth one that I've got in mind, I think it kind of goes along these same lines, but how about talk to him? You know, we're, we're in church, and, and this is the environment that, you know, I, I hear so often, thank you, Father. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Praying to Jesus. Praying to the Father. And that's great. That's all good. But we don't hear that language with the Spirit. You know, what would it look like to incorporate that into our prayer? Pray to the Spirit, the yeah. Spirit in us, the Spirit of God. I like that. Yeah. I, uh, I was taught that uh, the word God, you know, G-O-D, um, in the Hebrew, it's kind of a plural form. And really, when you say, thank you, God, 
technically you're addressing all three members of the Godhead. Really, you're like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I, I think that's pretty cool. So, I, you know, thank you, God. You know, get them all three in there. But, but maybe I ought to be more specific. Sure. One of my prayers, Brennan, as a preacher, when I'm coming up these stairs ready to, for the sermon, a, a video to end and me to start, I, I'm like, I trust you, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I trust you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think we ought to, ought to uh, pray. I think we ought to pray. Another one is uh, Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5.18 says, be filled with the Spirit. The whole text says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. I think we ought to convert that to prayer. And I think we ought to be like, Lord, fill me with your Spirit. I, you, you gave him to me. I want to be filled. Fill me. Um, and one of my prayer prompts is a water fountain. Mm. You know, it's not the drinking kind, the you know, spraying kind. Because Jesus says that you'll be given the Spirit, and He'll want to be welling up inside you. It's the word picture of a water fountain mm. just spraying everywhere. Outpouring. That's good. So when I see that, fill me with your Spirit. Yeah. So good. What else would you say? Oh, I think a good one would be to memorize. You know, memorize the Scripture. Just last week, we were, in, we were talking about the confidence that we can have in this, in, in the, the Word of God. Yeah. And what I'm thinking is, you know, maybe even memorize a Holy Spirit passage. It's something that has... Give us one. How about um, 1 John 4, 4? Great one. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, great, greater is he. It says, greater is he, the one who remains in us than the one of the world. Greater is he in us than the one of the world. Yeah. I love that one. Mm. I, one of my favorite yeah. Holy Spirit verses is uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3. Um, his divine nature, which is mm -hmm. a reference to the Holy Spirit, his divine nature has given us everything, provided everything we need for a godly life <sighs> because of his own glory and goodness. He's he, everything through his divine nature. Yeah. So, yeah, memorize some mm -hmm. key Holy Spirit uh, verses. And I think, that, let's not forget this last one, submit. I mean, if he prompts you, Submit. Submit to him. Follow his lead. He wants to lead. He wants to lead. And he's going to lead into truth. Listen, the Holy Spirit isn't about a feeling. It's not about, you might not ever feel anything because the Holy Spirit is, is wants to lead and he wants you to trust him and follow him. So let's be submissive to his lead. Brennan, what if we land the message this mm -hmm. way? I, I want to share some words of Jesus. Yeah. I love this. It's so powerful. Luke 11, Jesus, talking to his disciples, said this, starting with verse 9. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Whew. Everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And then he says this. Which of you fathers, all right, guys, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? No. You wouldn't do that, right? Or, verse 12, or if he asks for an egg, man, I'm hungry. Can I have an egg? Can I have a scrambled egg? Hey, will you give him a scorpion? No. You wouldn't do that, right? And then verse 13 if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Friends, if you're in Christ, you already got Him. As for you, the anointing you received from Him, you already got Him. And when you were united in Christ, you were cleansed and you were forgiven, and then you were gifted this incredible gift to be a permanent guest, really to be our guide for life. But Jesus says, so ask, and you'll receive. Oh, you already got him, but don't you want a little bit more of him? So just ask. Brendan, what if you close us with asking yeah, for us? Absolutely. Yeah. God, Father, Son, 
spirit. We're thankful for this time together. We're thankful uh, for us in the room. We're thankful for your presence in the room, Lord. We've talked this morning. We've, we've been able to celebrate this gift, this gift in us that acts as a guest, a permanent guest. Uh, and it's, it's something praiseworthy, Lord. And we know that all praiseworthy things come from you. It's another thing that we have thanks for. And God, it's, it's a gift that's good, and it's so good, it almost seems too good to be true. It's, it's a gift so good that we, we don't deserve it. And because that gift is so good, it almost feels like we need to do more than ask. But your word tells us that all we need to do is ask to receive. And we take that as truth. God, so we're, we feel you in this room. and We know you're present. So we're asking that you fill us, you fill this room, fill this community with your spirit, Lord. And that's something we're thankful for. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.